Hi everyone, uh, myself Ashok, uh, working as assistant professor in uh, Walchan Institute of Technology, Solapur. Today we will try to discuss on uh, analysis of stopping side distance. So, what is this uh, side distance? So, before we go into the stopping side distance, let me understand concept about the side distance first here. Side distance is the length of a roadway visible ahead to the driver of the vehicle. So, here we have taken a uh, three cases. So, uh, one could be able to see here, uh, one the case is uh, this is the length, this much length should kept for any type of the horizontal or vertical curves so that this much length is sufficient for a driver to take an action. Suppose if you keep the length is very less, so what will happen? So the, the both the driver will come very close to each other and at the time they could not able to take a proper action. Finally, he is going to meet an accident. So this is in horizontal curves. In comes to vertical curves, here also see that. So if you assume the driver height of 1.2 meter, and object height of 1.15 meter so this driver could able to see the object of 0.15 meter why we taken this uh, 1.2 meter height only car only taken because driver the driver of trucks and uh, multi axle vehicles they could able to see the uh, vehicle uh, opposite vehicle very easily so here the worst vehicle will be your car only so for that we take a 1.2 meter height and object point 1.5 so this much length we should keep it here otherwise if you will keep this length with very less so again the whatever the case happening in the horizontal curve will going to happen it here same case so this is the side distance we should keep it here and here in the intersection so this is the main road and this is a crossroad is coming over here and uh, this vision is obstructed because of any obstruction in the corner might be a building or a might be a, your uh, structure so because of this structure the vision is going to obstruct it what will happen so if you don't keep this side distance properly so this driver will come close and this driver will come close and at the time they will see each other and uh, by the time so the distance will fall short so what will happen it again going to meet an accident so finally what is the side distance it is the length of a road visible ahead to the driver of the vehicle. So, what are the types of side distance we have? Stopping side distance or non-passing side distance, also called uh, safe overtaking side distance, safe distance uh, for entering into uncontrolled intersections, intermediate side distance, and headlight side distance. So, here uh, we will try to discuss on stopping side distance today. By the definition, again, stopping side distance remains same. The again, it is a length many of distance visible to a driver a hit or side distance available on a highway at a spot should be of sufficient to safely stop a traveling vehicle at a design speed so you should able to stop when you see the opposite object you should able to take a proper action because if you not provide the sufficient length so he will not able to think and finally he's going to make an accident so without collision with any other obstructions also called absolute minimum side distance or non-passing side distance Obviously, the factors depends upon uh, uh, the what are the features of the road, whether it is a two-lane road or four-lane road or um, uh, six-lane road expressway. What is the height of the driver we are assuming? Here, we are assuming driver height is 1.2 meter and height of the object, we are assuming 0.15 meter. The factors is reaction time of the driver, speed of the vehicle, efficiency of the brake, frictional resistance and gradient of the road. So, let me quickly, what is the total reaction? So, here, when we uh, uh, driver perceives the object, he needs some time to think and during the thinking he will travel for some more distance and after that he will apply the brakes so after that apply the brakes the vehicle will not stop at that moment it will skid for some more distance so there again the vehicle will travel for some more distance so totally the stopping side distance is the, the distance traveled during the reaction time of the driver plus the distance traveled after the application of the brakes total combined we are going to call as stopping side distance speed of the vehicle efficiency of the brake frictional resistance gradient of the road all these are going to affect you uh, the calculation of the length of the road here speed of the vehicle is uh, is like uh, your uh, initial speed of the vehicle is high obviously when the initial speed of the vehicle is high he is requires more distance to stop the vehicle efficiency of the brake if you are having a very good efficiency of the brake you maintain the brake in a good condition obviously it will stop the uh, vehicle in a less distance it is again uh, how your frictional resistance you maintain between uh, your uh, tire and a road surface that affects your stopping of the vehicle again ultimately your length of the stopping side distance gradient of the road whether it is an uh, up gradient or down gradient that is going to affect you for stopping side distance 
So here, uh, the reaction time of the driver, uh, I'm going to explain with a simple diagram how is uh, this uh, process is goes in the mind of a driver. First, as, as soon as he sees the object, he will uh, perceive the object, and uh, during that, uh, the message will goes to the uh, brain through your screen, uh, skin, and uh, spinal cord. So here, uh, the he'll start thinking in the intellection uh, moment, and uh, during that, he might go for another uh, emotion uh, like fearing and all. So this time again, this is the another time, uh, the time uh, elapsed between all these three processes. Finally, he take the action in that response. That is the evolution time. So might be uh, depends upon driver to driver. Uh, the time might be a two to two point five seconds of that. Some drivers will take a reflex action, but this uh, depends upon how you are experienced of a driver. Uh, by the definition, uh, the total uh, SSD is uh, we are going to call as lag distance plus break distance. So uh, this is the whenever we persist the object he will stop here he will apply the uh, he will uh, when he object he realize the object is there uh, during that moment uh, that all PIV theory goes in his mind so this is the distance travel during the reaction time of the driver so again he applies the brakes here and uh, during that moment after the application of the brake you know that uh, when you apply the brake vehicle will not stop at that moment it will travel for some more distance so the distance travel during the reaction plus distance travel during the, this breaking. So that becomes your total stopping side distance. So uh, the stopping side distance uh, we are going to call, first we will try to find out the what is the lag distance and after what is the breaking distance. So lag distance is uh, as you just use a simple uh, your formula here V into T that is speed into uh, your time and uh, T is the total reaction of the travel. So as per the IRC guideline so we take uh, 2 to 2.5 seconds and uh, breaking distance uh, we're going to arrive here uh, assuming the level road the breaking uh, distance may be obtained by equating the work done in stopping the vehicle and the kinetic energy of the vehicle in motion and uh, we have to consider the friction force F and the breaking distance L so let me equate uh, work done against the friction force in stopping the vehicle and against the your kinetic energy so work done against the friction force is F into L equal to W into F into L and uh, work done is uh, work done against your kinetic energy is WV square by 2G. Let me equate uh, work done uh, and your kinetic energy. So here W into L equal to WV square by 2G. So W, W will get cancelled and finally L equals V square by 2G of here. V is in meter per second. So when we want to convert that uh, V into kmph uh, kilometer per hour, so we have to convert this uh, this meter per second into the kilometer per hour. So that the final equation is like this: V square by 254 F. So totally, uh, uh, let me rewrite the equations again. If you are uh, V is in meter per second, we have to use the equation. ST is uh, VT plus V square by 2GF. When you want to use uh, V is in KMPH, so we have to use 0.278 V into T plus V square by 254F. Let me see the one example here uh, calculating the stopping side distance. So for that, uh, it is given a speed of 50 KMPH and uh, he want to calculate, uh, is asking you to calculate two-way traffic on a two-lane road and two-way traffic on a single-lane road. A coefficient is uh, friction coefficient is 0.37 and reaction to the driver is 2.5 seconds so let me uh, convert this uh, mean uh, uh, v in kmph to the uh, meter per second so for that you just divide it by 3.6 it will convert into uh, how i arrived this equation it is uh, multiply this thousand into 1000 divided by 60 into 60 so that comes your 3.6 so 13.9 meter per second and t is 2.5 seconds and f is 0.37 so uh, gravitational i'll assume uh, z is 9.8 meter per second square and stopping side distance on level stretch so we are having a different equation for uh, uh, calculating different equation for level ground as well as on a slope ground but uh, given condition here it is uh, it is on level stretch so put the equation uh, Vt plus V square by 2GF. So finally, uh, we can able to get the side distance as 61.4. So for two lane two way traffic, uh, the 61.4 meter is sufficient. For single lane road, it is because uh, both the side vehicles are merging and weaving. So here we need to have uh, keep some more safety factor. So that's what uh, we are taking two times of the your uh, traffic side distance. So here two times of this side distance will be 
your single lane road with a two way traffic so i hope uh, this is going to be enjoyable and you understood the concept about ssd thank you